One of the things I love to do in my garage while I work is listen to music. The problem is, all I have is this 15 year old hi-fi. Now the problem with that is it doesn't have Bluetooth, it doesn't have Wi-Fi, and the only way I can get an auxiliary input into it is to connect a phone or an iPod. The problem is, most phones these days are starting to lose their headphone jack. What I do have is a Raspberry Pi and a Spotify account. So today, I'm gonna to take you through how to make a Spotify Connect speaker using a Raspberry Pi. The first thing you need for this project is the Raspberry Pi. This is a Raspberry Pi Model B 2.1. It's one of the older units, but more than sufficient to run this project. The second thing you'll need for your Raspberry Pi is an SD card to store the operating system. The minimum size SD card required for Raspbian is 8GB and Raspbian Lite is 4GB. To give power to your Raspberry Pi, you need a 5 volt power supply and a micro USB cable. This old 1 amp cell phone charger is more than sufficient. To connect your Raspberry Pi to a netbook, you will need a Wi-Fi dongle. I don't have one available, but I luckily have an Ethernet port available in my garage, and I will be making use of that. The final item you require will be an audio cable to connect from the Raspberry Pi to a Hi-Fi. You could also use an HDMI cable if you had an HDMI input available. This will give you better sound quality, as the audio out on the Raspberry Pi Model B is not very good. I'd like to take you through the process of a fresh Raspberry Pi setup. The first thing you need to do is download an operating system. For this project we're going to use Raspbian. This can be downloaded from raspberrypi.org. Raspbian Buster is the latest software available. I've already downloaded it. It comes in a zip file or you can download as a torrent. While that's downloading I would also recommend that you download Etcher Etcher is an imaging software, and this is used to write the ISO image to the SD card. As well as Etcher, you'll need to download PuTTY to access the Raspberry Pi without a mouse, keyboard, or screen. I've already unzipped the Raspberry and file, and in the unzip you will find a disk image. This needs to be written to the SD card. In order to do this, you need to open Etcher, you need to select the image you want to write, in this case it's Raspbian, open, you'll need to select your SD card, in this case it's already selected, and then you write flash. This process should take about 20 minutes to complete. Now that the write is complete, we can exit Etcher, but we just need to prepare the SD card for SSH access. Now SSH access will allow you to log into your Raspberry Pi and configure it without the use of a keyboard, mouse, monitor connected to it. It can sound intimidating, but if you just follow the guidelines, it can be a pretty straightforward process. In order to enable the SSH access, we just have to open the SD card we just wrote to. This can be done by going to boot E, which was our SD card, just opening the boot folder or the boot directory and created a new file and create a new text file and just call it SSH. Now what you will need to do is remove the .txt extension, so you go view, file name extensions, here you can see ssh.txt, just remove the .txt, and this has just created a file with the name ssh. We can now eject the SD card from the computer, and now we are ready to install it into the Raspberry Pi. I've installed the SD card into the Raspberry Pi and connected it to the network. You now need to determine what the IP address is of the Raspberry Pi. Your router will assign one automatically. To find out what the IP address is, you just need to access your router's control panel. One of the very common addresses for a router control panel is 192.168.0.1. Enter your username and password. This is the process for a TP-Link router. Most routers will have a similar interface and you will find the same functionality. What you need to do is go to the DHCP settings and the DHCP client list. And here you can see a list of all the clients that are connected to your router. Unfortunately, mine does not appear here, 
due to the configuration I've got in my garage, but I know that I've assigned a static IP address to the MAC address of the device. In order to access your Raspberry Pi via SSH, you will now need to open PuTTY. In PuTTY, you just enter the IP address of your Raspberry Pi. In my case, that's 192.168.0.102. Now the default login for Raspberry Pi is login name Pi and password Raspberry. And now we have access to the Raspberry Pi's command line. So the first thing you want to do is make sure that the packages already installed in the operating system are up to date. To do that, you type sudo apt update. What this will do, it will check for updates on the internet for any packages that are already installed on your Raspberry Pi. This could take some time depending on what version of Raspberry you downloaded. Just a fun fact, sudo stands for super user do and this basically instructs the Raspberry Pi which runs a Linux based system that you are the super user and it must accept commands from you. All right. The Raspberry Pi has found upgrades required. The next step is to install those upgrades. So you type sudo apt upgrade. This will perform the installation of the updates. Do you want to continue? Yes, I do. Now that the updates are finished installing, we need to install the packages that will allow us to install Raspotify. Raspotify is the software that is going to allow us to turn our Raspberry Pi into a Spotify Connect device. So to install these packages, we need to go sudo apt install. What you can basically think of us doing here is installing apps from an app store. Now, in order for us to install Ross Spotify, we need to allow access. So we have to run two commands that are essentially like a security key that will allow us to download the required software. What I've done is I've entered the key. Just a tip, if you need to enter long commands like this and you found a tutorial on the internet, what you can do is select the command, copy it, and then just right click on the screen and it will automatically paste the command. So the security has been installed. Now we need to update again to find the Raspotify download. Run the update, this should work quickly now. Now we install Raspotify. And that's it. The Respotify service is installed and ready to use. Technically, you could stop here and your device would work. But what we would like to now do is just make some minor modifications to the configuration of this. So what I'm going to go is sudo nano. And what nano is, is a text editing app. And I'm going to open the configuration for Respotify. These are some of the configurations. So basically what we've got to just change here is the device name. And this is what will show up on your Spotify app as the device you want to cast to. So you want to remove the hash because that comments out this line. And in this case, I'm going to call this garage speakers. And then the second change you want to make is just the quality of the stream. So the default is 160 kilobits. And I just want to change this to the max of 320. And that is it. To exit, you just go Control X. You say yes to save changes and enter. We now updated the configuration. And for the configuration to take place, we just need to do a restart on the Spotify service. And the Spotify service is restarted and ready to go.
Now that the Spotify system is running, there's just one minor change we also want to make to the configuration of the Raspberry Pi. By default, the Raspberry Pi is going to try and output audio to the HDMI port. And if there's no HDMI available, it's going to go to the 3.5 millimeter jack. The problem that there is, is that the output volume on the 3.5 millimeter jack is quite low by default. So what we want to do is set that up. In order to do that, we just have to again update our Raspberry Pi and we will need to install a utility that will allow us to configure the volume control on the 3.5 millimeter jack. So the first package I installed here was already installed on the Raspberry Pi by default and it was already updated. And the second one will now be installed. If we now browse the package we've just installed, which is called a mixer, we can see the configuration options that we have available to us. Like I mentioned earlier, by default, the Raspberry Pi will try and output audio to the HDMI port first. If no HDMI port is available, it will try the headphone jack. So the only change we want to make here is to the volume. So to access the volume, we want to go So what I want to do here is just set the volume to 90%. And that is done. We can now open Spotify and try and play a song to our external speakers. It's now playing on the computer speakers to start. I'm going to select garage speakers. We're going to play through the garage speakers. Hi everyone. Thanks for tuning into this video. The tutorial I used today to create the Spotify speaker came from a website called Pi Up My Life. I'll be linking them in the description below. Everything's been mounted here, out of the way, to create my permanent setup. If you enjoyed your video today, please consider giving it a like and subscribing to the channel. And until next time, stay safe.